Here's how we're going to be making a miniature cube out of metal clay. Cube. You first need a template and I like to print one out and then you can choose what size of side you want to go with. Reinforce it with some clear packing tape or a couple of stripes of scotch tape. That's just going to make it nice and crisp and able to withstand the wetness of the clay. Here is how I've done this. I've cut it out and using the X-Acto, I've just cut out the chosen square that I wanted to use. And I've already textured the clay. I rolled it out, put a texture on it. The texture is optional. It just adds some variety to what your sides look like. And then you just, one at a time, place the template over all of the clay, and then you just cut out. And if you notice, they're not all perfect but you're going to, along the way, make them better looking. This is what they look like when you remove all the extra clay. If you've made complete cuts, this should go together pretty nicely, meaning it should come off very cleanly if you cut completely all around each square. And you're gonna need to do some beveling. That means holding each side of each panel at a 45 degree angle and then you're running it across the emery board or across sandpaper or across the sanding sponge. This is going to make it so that it has a better connection with all the other sides of this cube. This is what the beveling looks like on all the six sides. Once the 45 degree angle has been achieved on all of the sides, then they're going to go together a lot easier. They may be a little bit rough looking, but you can do a little bit of cleanup at the very end. This shows that I have quite a bit of slip, and my, the slip that I have is a lot thicker. And when you load it up on your brush, you can scrape that brush across all of the sides. I would do one side at a time, and you're just going to put together a pair first, like in. This just shows building the box two sides at a time. So I've got two sides in the upper left and I just scrape some of the paste on one side, one bevel, press a dry side into it. Then I stand it upright just to make sure that they're level. And then I press a third side in. But in this middle photo, in the lower two edges, that's where I would scrape some more paste and then press a dry side into the paste just for a second or two. And then you can let it dry if you want to, or you can continue to build. In this view, I have two more sides left. Notice that in the left-hand picture, there's a little bit of a hole in the corner. This is a good opportunity when you have it built with this many sides, you can fill in any of those cracks or spaces with paste. The paste is not going to be seen, so it's okay to be generous and to use it sort of as a reinforcer to keep everything together and to keep it strong and sturdy. After I've added the fifth side, I like to level the top. And so it just shows on the right that I've tipped this box over, this cube over, and I've sanded it on one of the sanding sponges and then that just kind of levels it out so that on the last side I can press it onto all the remaining sides. Don't forget to use quite a bit of paste here. It's all right if the paste kind of oozes out because you can just wipe that off with your fingertip. So that's what this one is showing. It's showing what it looks like after you've put a bunch of paste on the very last bit on that rim and then you press the top on and then just kind of press it very gently with your finger and then there it is now if you look at the very right hand side the last photo it's a little bit messy some of the the sides are not quite flush with the others that's where the cleanup comes in so it's a good idea at this point to let it dry and maybe give it an hour or so, maybe a little less depending on the humidity in your workspace. And then you can do some cleanup. This is where the paste is gonna come in handy.
because on all of those sides, all of those edges that don't quite meet up with the other edges, this is where you can fill it in with paste. You may need a few layers in order to do this because this is just sort of like what would happen if you were soldering and you had a little gap. Now with the metal clay, it's a little tougher to try and get really, really good edges to meet. So if you have to do a little cleanup here involving filling in with some paste, scraping it along those edges, then that is what you will need to do. And it will clean up just fine. But for now, just worry about the gaps in the spaces that may not have been completely covered. This is where most of that is going to occur on all of those corners and all of those edges. If there are any kind of gaps at all, then just work on trying to make the edges a little bit cleaner. So what I might advise on this is to clean off your brush first of any remaining paste. I have an awful lot of paste on this brush, but it does help if you have a clean brush and then you only apply the paste to the very end of your brush. And that way it can, it can be a little bit more concentrated with how you're filling in all of those gaps. After it's dry, this is where you can go in and you can smooth out anything that may be a little rough from where the paste was. And then you can, you don't have to make the, the corners very sharp. They can be a little rounded, sort of like a dice. That is going to be achieved with the emery board. You can use either side of the emery board. If you need to get things done quickly, use the darker side. If you're trying to just refine and smooth out some of the things that you sanded with the darker side, then switch to the lighter side. Already you can see a big difference. All of those sides are a lot more rounded. They're a lot more simple looking. They're less rough. Now you can go in with one of the sanding sponges. You can start with the blue, the microfine, and then switch to the ultrafine, which is the green. I highly advise as well to clean off your paste brush at this point and dry it off a little because all of the dust, depending on your texture, you can sweep it off with the brush as you are sanding. And that's gonna make it look a lot cleaner and neater as you're working. This just shows how much dust I was generating just using the blue sponge on this, the sanding sponge. There's a lot of dust there and that can go right back into the paste or the slip jar and water it, add a couple of sprays of water. And after you've got all this done, then it is, is a huge difference in how smooth and how neat your product looks. And these are just showing how every single side has been smoothed it was emeried with the sand, sanding board first and then gone over with just one of the micro sponges. And then it has seriously smoothed everything out and it's going to make it look a whole lot better once it's been fired. Now it's time to add a bale and you have a couple of options. There is included on the template, there's some bale profiles that you can opt for. I went for the middle size and I kind of changed the size around just a little bit but you're going to do exactly the same thing that you did with the template when you started. You put some clear tape on it first and then you can slice out with an exacto your chosen shape and then you can either use the cutout to trace or you can use the template with the missing spot to trace. I personally chose to use the cutout with the missing spot, just like you would a plastic template. And I cut it out and then I removed all the extra clay from around it. Doing a bale like this is a lot trickier than it looks. And I've just wrapped it around a straw. You can wrap it around a brush handle if you want to. And it, it's a little flimsy, so it may take some practice. My bale in this photo was on the verge of being a little too dry, so it was starting to crack a little bit. 
my intention was that I would shape it to the way that I wanted it to be when it dried. And then I would go back and I would fill in any cracks with paste. So here you can see that I've propped my cube in a little drink cap just to kind of prop it up so that it was sitting upright. The bale is not actually connected. It is just resting on the side of the box and it's not even in the right place. I just wanted it to dry in this position so that it would have surface area where it was connecting to the cube. And then it's also very, very dry and cracked. And you can see on the very far right, you can see how it's starting to crack a bit. I'm not sure I even like the way that it curves because it's a little bit narrow, but I'm gonna just leave this open as an option. So when it dries, I'll be able to just remove that bale right off of this box since it's not connected with paste. And then I'll figure out whether or not I wanna to continue to use it. But I have a second bale option now. This bale option just is a whole lot easier. It involves a little ball of clay and you can see how big it is in relation to a penny. You can make it a little bit larger if you want to. And then I used another drink cap, the smooth part, to just flatten it a little bit into a donut shape. And then I use the end of the straw to poke a hole in the center. And you can squeeze the end of the straw and you can extrude that little bit of clay that's, that's sitting there in the end. And this one, I've used this for several kinds of, of pendants and it works very, very well. Now, before that little donut dries, you just slice a corner out of it, 90 degree cuts. And that way it will fit right onto any of those corners of the cube.